technically your next project is four. Yeah. Which, as I understand it, is four people in a warehouse being nasty to a chap. That's right, yeah. It's ostensibly, it's, uh, ostensibly it's, it's a kidnap movie. Um, uh, a cuckolded husband hires a detective me to abscond and kidnap the lover of his wife, or so he thinks. So the detective, my character, throws, finds the lover, detects him, throws a hood over him, chucks him the boot of the car, drives him to a deserted paper warehouse in Taplo, which is freezing cold, and beats some bells out of him. And then the plot sort of unravels. In fact, I, we got a great poster quote the other day that said it's got more twists in a bag of pretzels. Nice movie. I know. <laughs> So that's, I presume, a nice small British film. It is, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's written by a fantastic writer called Paul Cornell, uh, who uh, um, I came onto very, very late in the day. They'd already started shooting, and I sort of stepped in because something didn't work out with, with someone that was there originally. So I had a very short lead to it, like a two nights. But the thing was, I'd read it because my friend Craig Conway, who I'd worked with about three or four times with Dog Soldiers and things, there, and we worked together a lot, developing films as well. Um, I'd read it when he was attached, and I loved it. Then, of course, I got a terrifying phone call saying we start tomorrow, and the first first day in was 20 pages of dialogue. But the thing is about it is that it's so exceptionally written. The way that, I think the best way of describing it is like saying he's pinned without the pauses. It's in it's in the same sort of vein as sort of charade, charade movies like that ilk. It's like like I said, pinned without the pauses. It's completely dialogue driven and performance driven. And as an actor, it's like having a kind of colonic in a kind of way because we were freezing cold in this extraordinary warehouse, beautifully shot, and uh, in the, the dead of night, dead of winter. And there, you know, there was another facade, nothing you could be hide behind. So it's from an actor who's incredibly liberating. And of course, working with the likes of Martin Compton, we know from Sweet 16, and a myriad of films, and Kirsten Waring, I stepped in. And it was a, a really intense. Uh, experience so much so, I mean, that's why I'm so delighted about a film like this wriggles through and comes through and is opened up. It's been picked up by a lot of festivals as well and it's been received a lot of favourable press because it is so different. It's, it really is quite refreshing. I'd expect in the hyper recession that should be more work like this um, uh, raising its head. You know, I, I come from the punk rock generation and I'm surprised that I think at the moment things are slightly flat in the art world, not here. Say, but in the music world and also in the film world, this is a time of experimental, and this is a time we should be experimenting and taking risks. And in the same way, it's got that Jacobean, uh, it's got the, the, in many respects, like you know, with Tarantino, mm. with Reservoir Dogs, say, for example, it's got that essence, very similar to that, that kind of drive. And the writing is absolutely superb. That's why I, I did it. And it's so it's set in a warehouse, presumably much more theatrical, because obviously I've, I've not yet had a chance to it, but it felt almost like a, a play then, one location and... If, yes, but it's, I, mean, I don't want to scare our viewers, because the thing is, it, it, although it is, it's, it, it's incredibly cinematic, we shot a lot on wide, the director, John Land Landrich, is a first time director, but his background is in theatre, but the, 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 almost like the fifth character actually is the warehouse, um, it's, it's ominous, it's, and it's funny, but it's claustrophobic, it changes constantly, because as I said, the story says, and I really, it's one of those really difficult jobs to talk about because if I, if, I, if I go any further than what I've already told you about the actual sort of the subtext and the, the basic plot, it would blow the ending because the ending is kind of bizarre and extraordinary. You know, and right up to the last and guessing what's going on. Really. You mentioned that you sort of you came on board the project late. Yeah. Is that partly a reaction? You, I presume with this, this gallery and the, the work with yeah. that, is that taking a lot of your time then? No, I mean, see, the thing is, this is Soho, and the reason why we opened the gallery in Soho to begin with, with my two partners, Simon Anderson and um, James, was because I spent all my time in Soho. I used to have a production company called Natural Island with, with Jude and Johnny and Ewan and things like that, so we were always based in Soho. I also do um, a lot of voice service, so every single studio, in fact, this was a sound recording studio. So I actually think I probably did some dubbing here. You know, we've got Delaney Lee opposite. And the thing was, there, there were, there was one other or two other galleries in this sort of very, in this like close vicinity. We wanted to be in the heart of Soho. We wanted to be at the forefront of the resurgence of Soho to bring people back. We also wanted to make it a point of reference um, and make it sort of a theatrical space. So when people say came from New York or came from Europe, they'd always go, oh, check out Bert Anderson and Gold because there's always something exciting going on there and 
even though that, the whole I, the idea behind this, we wanted to make it more like a parlour because that's how artists used to sell and, and um, 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 sell art was from, from their parlours. So we had a set of designer called Dennis Schneg came in, who works with Danny Boyle, and in the back room it's like, the, it's like a Hogarthian sort of opium den. But we've given the, 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 the it's like we call them Scooby Doo doors, you go through level, level beyond level beyond level, because we've given the primary artists, which we want this space, this area for upstairs and downstairs is to use it like almost like a senior march for the uh, the artists to do what they will. I mean, this is as you say, it's a theatrical space. Yeah. It feels very sort of not quite oh, okay. real. Well, yeah. 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 Have you thought of sort of offering this out as a location? Yeah, I mean, funny enough, we, we we have those. We've been we, we this is something that we want to sort of develop with the space is to make it live and breathe. We've already done a couple of functions already in the evening for people to use it. They don't normally use art galleries because of its, because of its demeanor, because of its character. Um, people are now sort of coming to us and saying, well, could we do this here? So th this is what I mean, is we're going to start opening up, especially when it's dark in between the shows. We have a five week um, show and then two week off. So those two weeks we'd like to be able to do, develop things, ideas for anyone who wants to do anything that creative is to come here. With, you've, you've obviously done four. Yeah. Recently, I know you were in briefly um, Dexter Fletcher's film Wild well, Bill. I've known Dexter um, for years. I used to look after him when he was doing Worse or Greenwich. I don't think he did Worse or Greenwich. I know he's down at this. When he's my, his mum's been But I've known Dexter since he was about. I know he did the Green Cross Code with my dad when he was about six. Oh, there you go. We're getting old. No, but I did, so I did uh, another one called with Dominic Burns called UFO, which I played a prophetic tramp. And I just did a fantastic film called Naked Harbour, which I'm very excited about. This guy called um, Aku Lohimis, and he's a, um, a Finnish director, um, and he's won the Gothenburg Award a couple of times. He's a, it's extraordinary that move towards Scandinavian, the art of Scandinavian filmmaking has really exploded recently with Norway, with you know, the Trollhunt, with a myriad of films, okay. like Gold Dragon Tattoo. Really. And we did this film called Naked Harbour, and I was the only English speaker or American speaker in it. Wow. And, uh, and Penty, Paul, uh, Paulie Penty, who's the producer for Jim Jarmusch, was the producer of it. And I got this call and I, and I went over and it was one of those sort of extraordinary experiences. So I've been very lucky, I've been very busy. And it always makes you feel more confident when you have another string to bow. And this is why I enjoy this so much, is it, it ties in, this is in the heart of the film industry and, and, and voiceover work and everything. It's where all my friends are, it's where I grew, grew up around here and I live down the road. So it's, it's, uh, you know, for, it's a very difficult time for everybody, so it's, it's a good time for me. I'm curious. <laughs> this is selfish, not really. Not really the PC. You do seem to sort of jump between a very small British project yeah. and then very large American yeah. projects. Yeah. Do you have a preference? There? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I, you know, much to my wife's detriment and annoyance, she loves Hollywood and everything like that. And, and of course, now that I have a son, and, and you know, work, you go where work is, but. I do have a preference to the way that we approach work. It would be nice to get paid every once in a while, of course, in this country, which doesn't seem to happen very often, <laughs> same about producers. But um, you do, I just had a fantastic phone call, which I can't really talk about now, from someone who works at Special Effects, who's directing his first feature. And uh, um, it's a great script, and we're going to do it. I mean, I think I'm going to do it, my agent next week. <laughs> My wife lets me <laughs> And that's, that's a small yeah, it's, it's Again, it's an, an independent, but the thing is, I, I am a firm believer, and I always did with um, directors like Paul Anderson and Jeremy Bolt, when we started the impact, we did Shopping, which was one of the first independent films that Channel 4 made, the film 4 made with David Walker. Yeah. That went on to Blue Juice, went on to a lot of a myriad of other, for me, you know, with ID and all of those kind of independent films at the time. Yeah. Um, it was a spawning ground, and that's why I have a real preference to work with upcoming talent. Um, the, the, whereas before, we, we, the, 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 where people used to cut their teeth Sorry. was on television. Um, uh, but now it goes, it's, that's, that's really it's, 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 it's committed straight to film, which I think is always a shame, because I wish we still had the, the, uh, the opportunity to do screen twos, play for today's, things like that, to, to basically to cut our teeth and learn the industry. Where, but now people have to pitch and do great pitch on their first project as a movie, and often through an experience, it runs over, the budget's small, money's tight, it can go a bit wobbly. But four, I have to say, isn't one of those. That really does punch through above its weight. 
for what it is. It's, 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 uh, and I love the fact a year and a half later it's been picked up independently and it's being shown all over the country. So I'm proud of that. Do you think maybe one day you might move into producing and trying to go for? Because I mean, you, you clearly are a man that likes the sort of the small. I, would, I don't know how to produce. I just haven't got the. the uh, I'm not calm enough to produce, but I would definitely want to direct. In fact, I've got a piece I wrote with Ed Allen based on Chris Fowler's shorts, and we had an idea, uh, which I don't know what I'm going to, but it's, uh, it's it's something that I want to do when I have a minute. So. We can hope to see that, yeah. given how busy you are. It's, it'll be a series as well. Mm. It's, uh, it's to, 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 to rival the, um, the Roald Dahls. Um, the Tales of Unexpected is to rival that, but it's a much darker and belly in London version of 12 Shorts, nice. which we developed actually when we were in Natural Rival. So that's the idea. So it's been sat there for a while. It's, it's been now. sat there, so I need to get on it. Yeah. I'm curious now. <laughs> What's stopping you? Yeah. I just tired at the moment, really. I mean, it's just great. It's just tired. Really. And also, money is very, very good. As you know, it's, it's hard to come by. You know, commitment and you know, you need to have names. It's goes with the streets and stuff. You know, you need to have people attached. You need to have money in place. So there needs to be people to be involved. And uh, a lot of people are calling freebies all the time now. It's uh, like I said earlier on. You know, at some point, you do need to. Stop subsidising your own industry and actually earn some money. You know, I want to pay crews and and as well as the actors. You know, so that's imperative. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, guys.